All right, folks, so today Wahoo is officially entering the automatic climb detection party with their new Summit free ride feature with their Element Bolt V2 as well as the Rome V2 bike computers, where they'll be able to automatically predict climbs that are approaching when you're just riding along. And they'll also tell you all the details of those climbs, like how long they are and how steep they may be, all without you having to load in a route at all. It just does this all automatically whenever or wherever that you're riding. Now, Hammerhead has had this feature out for quite some time now with their Karoo bike computers, and then Garmin also just introduced something similar with their Edge 840 and 540. And while all of these have the same theory of automatically detecting climbs, as you can imagine, there's also a bit of nuance and some differences between how they all work, which we'll talk about here in just one bit. But I also wanted to point out that Wahoo has added a special little feature to this update that currently isn't available on those other devices, which is a pretty cool little feature. Now, to start off with, the reason why this sort of automatic climb detection feature is really useful is that if you're just riding along and don't have a route loaded into your device, well, your bike computer doesn't really know where you're going other than forward. However, if you do load in a route to your computer, it'll know exactly where you're going and it'll also know the elevation profile of that route because it has all that data built into the route file. And that's really the kind of trick with this kind of feature is that it's literally trying to predict where you're headed and in turn, try to predict if a climb is coming up. So while many of us do plan out routes in advance on some occasions, more often than not, at least for me, I just kind of want to grab my bike and start riding without a route in mind. And that's where this kind of feature is super useful because I can still get details of any climbs that I may encounter on a ride, which can help me manage my efforts during a climb, whether that's a short punchy climb or a climb that may be many miles long. So for how this exactly works, what happens is when your Element Bolt V2 or your Rome V2 detects a climb, up pops an alert that a climb is approaching with a distance countdown to the climb on the upper left with the information about the climb on the right in regards to how long it is, as well as the average gradient of the climb. And then as soon as the climb actually starts, it automatically switches to a special summit climbing data page. And on this page, it'll show summit up top with the number of your current climb. Then there's gonna be a timer below it for the climb itself, the ascent remaining on the climb, the distance remaining on the climb, the current grade, as well as an estimated finish time. And then below that, there's an elevation profile of the climb that's color coded indicating different grades. So green meaning shallow, yellow for mid grades, and then red for, oh my God, my legs are burning. And then you'll also notice too that it shows your current position on the climb and it sort of grays out the portion of the climb that you've already completed. And then as you go to finish the climb, it shows that you hit the summit of that climb and then it'll also add it to a completed climbs list. But not only that, if there happens to be another climb that it detects after that first climb, it immediately shows that in an upcoming climbs list to let you know to get ready for what's more to come. And one more cool thing about this feature is that if we take a look at the map page, it'll even indicate any detected climbs that are approaching with chevrons on the map. So you can also have a visual of any approaching climbs. And then basically just rinse and repeat where with this next climb, right before the climb, it prompts you that you're about to start the climb and then there you go. And by the way, this does work for road biking, gravel biking, as well as mountain biking. But along with this new Summit free ride feature, there's also one very cool thing that they've added with this update. So here's that same map page again, but now I've added an elevation chart data field to the bottom. And here's the really cool part. Even though I'm not actually on a climb at the moment, well, it's still showing me the elevation profile of my predicted path. So it'll still give you an idea of the elevation profile that you'll likely encounter on your path, whether that's a climb, a downhill, or a flat section. And this is something that definitely extends the idea of automatically detected climbs to the rest of the riding experience, not just climbs. And they've also built in some other customizations for the ride experience where you'll be able to turn off the always on summit segments functionality if you'd like, or you can have it just enabled if you load in a route, or you can completely turn it off altogether. And then in addition to all that, you can also customize the climb detection in regards to what kind of climbs it should actually try to detect, whether those are gonna be all climbs, medium to large climbs, or just large climbs. And I guess that does get us to how it actually detects these climbs and what it considers to be a climb. So if we take a look at this chart here, here's the requirements needed to be classified as a climb. And it's kind of a sliding scale, but the minimum it's looking for is a 3% grade as well as being at least 400 meters long. Or if it's a shorter climb of at least 250 meters, it needs to be at least a 7% grade. And then here's where you can also see the parameters of how it classifies medium to large climbs. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, there is a lot of nuance for how this all works. And although the theory is the same with this sort of feature, Wahoo, Garmin, and Hammerhead all act just a little bit differently. So to say which one is better, well, I think it probably more comes down to your personal preference. So when it 
comes to how it actually classifies clients, this is where I found a pretty big difference between what Wahoo and Hammerhead do versus what Garmin does. So for example, on this climb here, what you'll notice is that the climb that was detected on the Bolt V2 is much shorter than what was detected on the Edge 840. And basically what this is all about is that the Wahoo tends to break out climbs based on trail or road intersections. So if we fast forward a bit, we can see that the element ends the climb at this intersection here, but the main trail that I'm on actually continues further all the way up to the top of this trail system, which is what's reflected on the 840, where the element actually broke out this entire climb into three different sections. And this sort of brings up another nuance with how all this automatic climb detection works with different devices. So with that last example, the trail to the left was actually a different trail, but what happens when the road ends and actually comes to a T, but there's still maybe climbing in either direction. So with this climb here, we see again that the Garmin is including more than the Wahoo element as well as the Hammerhead career too. And I'm not necessarily saying that the Garmin is more correct here by any means because, well, if we go to the left, that involves more climbing, but if we go to the right, that actually goes downhill. So in this case, if you want to take it right at the T where there wouldn't be any more climbing, with Garmin, when you saw this climb detected, you may think that, oh boy, this climb kind of goes on for a long ways where it actually just ends at that T. So with the Wahoo element as well as the Career 2, they both ended that climb at the T, and then a few seconds later, they do actually recognize that next climb when I do take a left, and it actually does start to climb. And that's basically the trend I saw is that both Wahoo as well as Hammerhead tend to break out climbs a bit more than Garmin, where Garmin tends to link climbs together and Wahoo kind of splits them out a bit more. And again, probably personal preference on which one you may like more. And then for some other differences I noticed, Garmin tends to build in a lot of runway to the climbs it detects, where more often than not, there's a good amount of lead up, I guess you could say, where it tends to include a flat section that leads up to a climb, whereas Wahoo and Hammerhead usually just classify the climb itself with not much lead up. And then when it comes to the actual triggering of each climb, whether there's a runway or not, Garmin also tends to be the first of the party here where Wahoo and Hammerhead are just a few seconds behind. Now, I did encounter one sort of odd thing I wanted to bring up is that on just a handful of occasions, I didn't see chevrons on the map page indicating that a climb was there, even though a climb actually did trigger. And this seemed to have something to do with maybe mixing different road surfaces. And I'm sure this is just kind of a small bug or something because when I flipped back to the map page after the climb had actually started, the chevrons then appeared. Not really that big a deal, but I'm sure that's gonna get fixed with a software update. Oh, and then for one last thing I wanted to cover is that this update is for the Rome V2 as well as the Bolt V2, but it isn't coming to older models. And I think a lot of that has to do with storage capacity as they do need to build in more data into the base maps for this function to work. But overall, this is a really nice implementation of the automatic climb detection feature without a route, just like Hammerhead and Garmin have had, but I got to say that I'm really stoked about that new predicted elevation graph as well as the rest of customization that they allow you to do. They may be a little bit late to the party, but you can tell that they did put a lot of thought into how this should work on their devices. And it's not to say that the Garmin or Hammerhead are better or worse, but again, there's just a lot of nuance for how each company thinks about this feature and how it's implemented. Anyhow, if you have any questions about how this all works that I didn't cover in this video, just go ahead and pop a comment down in the comment section down below. And on your way down there, if you found the information in this video useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos just like this that are coming soon. In the meantime, happy riding and we will see you in the next video.